Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Games and Crazy Leela video series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look at Leela with Night Odds again, this time playing against a um, very strong player, 2500 plus on uh, Lee Chess, played quite a few games and they were pretty spectacular. This one features, just for Mr. Beads, a semi-slav. And um, the funny thing is, is that um, uh, Lila with Night Odds plays exactly the same as Sergio Mariotti, the Italian Fury, whose uh, games we've been looking at recently, the same way that he played against um, the Swiss master, Edwin Bend. So, um, uh, but of course, Mariotti had a, had a knight on G1 and Leela doesn't. But quite interesting to see uh, great minds thinking alike in, that, in this way. Let's have a look how the game started. So it was uh, c4, c6, knight c3, d5, and d4. And uh, yeah, you know, you kind of think, well, you know, with a knight missing, maybe you've got to be careful about, um, you know, letting black take a pawn on c4, for example, because, uh, you know, uh, you might not be able to get that one back that easily with a knight less. But actually, Leela doesn't care. Um, you know, this uh, extra pawn sacrifice on top of the odds piece, yeah, that's just simply to um, to stir things up, to create imbalance. So after knight f6, bishop g5, and then d takes c4. Bishop g5 on move four, never thought to be a good move um, in the semi-slav, um, you know, <laughs> with the knight on g1. But uh, yeah, Leela's uh, not bothered at all about uh, the sacrifice, just going for the disruption, double pawn center, and then the opportunity to chase away the knight from f6. So knight d5 uh, played by black. And now uh, bishop e2 by, um, oh, sorry, a4 from uh, um, from uh, Leela. Uh, bishop e2 was what uh, Torch and uh, Stockfish were looking at. But Leela just playing a4, putting a bit of pressure, waiting to see what uh, black will do. So um, this bishop on g5 is a little bit annoying, pinning the uh, pawn to the queen. So you can't go e6. What the uh, engines were looking at was uh, stuff like uh, h6 as early as possible. Um, and, you know, if you're playing bishop to h4, then there were even moves like queen d7, for example. Um, maybe looking at a queen g4, sneaky, to uh, force the uh, exchange of queens by attacking the, uh, the bishop and the queen. And also, of course, preparing e6 um, because you're getting out of the pin on the e-pawn. The bishop can come to b4. The queen's defending b5, which is a bonus, so you can develop the knight to a6. You know, that was quite um, a decent way of playing. I mean, black played the move uh, bishop b7. And uh, I know that if I'd been playing odds here, I would have thrown in uh, e6 takes and uh, and queen g4, something like that. Um, just, you know, use the opportunity to um, uh, to weaken the black king side. Um, a little bit surprised that uh, Leela didn't do that, but uh, Leela just uh, kept things, um, you know, just uh, moving with bishop e2 and uh, Leela's going for the um, for the long, uh, the long game, really. I mean, the point is that, uh, you know, Leela really always likes having this pawn chain the pawn on e5, chasing a knight away from f6, so weakening the uh, defense of black's king. And Leela thinks that, you know, this, this sort of structure um, does give white long-term possibilities for play. So Leela's not, you know, sort of dashing for um, for the first uh, possible uh, uh, weakness that it can find. It's just going for, uh, for the long-term play. And, you know, that's what makes Leela's uh, odds play so... Uh, so inspirational, actually, and so so dangerous, really. It's this mix of sometimes going for really quick attacks and sometimes just playing the long game, going for the long term compensation. So um, black played the move h6 and bishop h4 played. So Leela just, um, you know, making it hard for black to play uh, e6. Queen d7 here would be reasonably sensible. But black played the move g5 and e6. And that's not stupid at all. You see this a lot in semi-Slav Botvinnik systems <laughs> with a knight on f3, in actual fact. Um, this would be a Moscow, um, an anti-Moscow gambit from white, you know, a uh, very common position. Um, well, what white gets is uh, a quick castles here, at least. You don't need to develop your knight from, uh, from g1. So here, quite interesting, you know, the engines always looking for rapid counterplay and uh, they tend to, um, you know, to see the um, the extra piece as a sort of a license to accelerate that, you know, even sacrifice a pawn in order to be able to achieve it. A C5 is what the engines were uh, looking at. Knight takes B5, A6. 
just looking to sacrifice like this, break the stuff open, get those pieces working. Okay, white's got the two bishops, but um, but yeah, you know, black's got a good knight. This bishop's uh, open now, and if you take on c5, this knight will get into uh, to play. The queen can come to f6. You know, there's stuff happening somehow, right? Um, that's what the uh, the engines want to achieve with their uh, with their extra piece. And um, what black does, black you know, sort of plays quite restrained somehow, you know, and, uh, and well, I mean, this is the, the constant surprise about this odds play, about, um, you know, uh, how um, um, an extra piece behind um, a somewhat restrained uh, black structure can actually turn out, you know, to give white incredibly good compensation. Um, and so bishop g7 played knight e4, castles and knight d6 now we're still talking about uh you know an advantage of uh you know minus 3.14 for um for black so still very much you know huge advantage there but um but um you know you, you're gonna st see it suddenly you know starting to to um sort of melt away that black advantage and certainly i think from a human um point of view you're already getting just a little bit nervous you know because white seems to have achieved quite a bit and with black all that you've done is somehow develop in a bit of an ugly fashion here queen b6 played from black which makes me nervous somehow um okay you're attacking the pawn on d4 but you're moving a piece away from the king side and there aren't that many pieces uh you know um <laughs> covering the king side in all fairness so um, bishop f3 here. I mean, actually, uh, what did uh, uh, the engines want? The engines wanted bishop a6, you know, move that uh, bishop out there. If a takes b5, it'll take back with a bishop and then try and get in c3, you know, <laughs> just, you know, open the position, you know, get that extra piece, you know, out, even at the cost of, uh, of, of, of a few pawns, maybe, you know, get that piece active. But queen b6 and now bishop f3 from white. And this is quite interesting. Um, I noticed actually in the um, in the crazy Leela videos, um, I did a video on this um, and um, crazy Leela was very keen on uh, capturing a knight like this on d5. You know, even undoubling the black pawns, but then really making a, a completely solid wall, which means that this bishop is never getting active. <coughs> and of course, you know, if you're talking about, uh, um, you know, odds play, then having a bishop like that on b7, that's going to take a very long time to get active. Well, that's basically, uh, you know, you're not really, you know, feeling that um, that uh, piece less very much. So um, the other thing that Leela's looking at is just to move that bishop to e4 and uh, get the pressure like this and then start attacking with h4 and f4. That's another big way that, uh, that Leela can uh, make use of that. So knight d7 from black, um, I was already thinking about trying to get in, uh, you know, some f6 or some f5, to be honest. Um, but knight d7 and uh, bishop takes d5 here. C takes d5, a5, and now queen c6. And this is a really interesting moment because, you know, both Torch and Stockfish were looking at playing a5, queen c7, takes, takes. And Leela played it the other way around. Um bishop takes d5 c takes d5 a5 and the funny thing about that is that playing it this way around gives black extra possibilities black can play queen c6 as well as queen c7 but if you give this to torch and stockfish torch and stockfish are saying oh no this queen's got to go to c7 it's important that the queen is able to defend along the second rank but when you offer it to a human player, queen c6 kind of feels a bit more natural, really, because you're still defending the pawn on b5. But the difference is for the engines, queen c7 is still minus 1.7. Queen c6 is only minus 0 0.75. So I get the feeling that Leela's giving the opponent, human opponent, the chance to go wrong, giving it extra possibilities and uh, actually in this case attempting very natural possibility for a human player that actually ends up being um, much, much worse than, uh, than, uh, than the other one. And you might have forced the other one to happen. Here you're giving the human uh, the possibility to go wrong and he does go wrong as well. And um, one of the nice things as well that um, uh, that uh, Queen C6 gives to White is the opportunity to play the move A6. Um, not yet, but, um, you know, if you don't take the pawn, then the bishop has to go back to C8 and you're blocking the rook from defending. And if you play bishop takes A6, and it just means that um, a um, um, uh, the bishop is hanging to the rook on A6. So if this queen ever needs to run back to the queen side or king side or something like that, then the bishop on A6 will be hanging. 
So that's the extra possibility as well that um, that white gets. And it's used a few times in a few uh, sub variations. Whereas, of course, if you're on uh, c7, then after a6, the bishop can just come to c6. Really subtle that. But I, I seriously think that uh, Leela gave the, gave the opponent extra chance to uh, to go wrong there just through the move order that Leela chose. So f4 was played by white. And uh, actually, to be honest, you know, it's only draws from now on. The engines already think that the position, you know, black's still a bit better, but white's got pretty much full compensation for the piece. I mean, yeah, again, I'm recalibrating uh, what I, you know, what I think uh, about compensation and all that. And the engine's already trying to play either f5 or um, f6 to, um, you know, to, uh, to even things up. I mean, um, uh, let's have a look. F6 was the main line. Takes takes queen h5, and uh, you're looking to try and get queen g6 and attack e6. So, yeah, the engine's uh, looking to try and create some some quick counterplay, hitting d4. But of course, we'll, we'll we'll have rook c1, c7 here, and we'll also have queen g6 as well. So, you know, lots of um, uh, lots of stuff happening there. And um, actually, after bishop a6, queen g6, the engine say, yeah, the best thing you can do is to give the piece back and um and consolidate and yeah you know blacks managed to um uh to get um the pieces active um this bishop has got some potential with b4 at the cost of giving the piece back and very sharp you know uh 98 it's quite a nice move is what uh, the engines want uh, looking to take on g7 maybe bring the bishop to e5 later or even actually just play knight back to d6 here and go for a draw by repetition you know so um this is um it's all possible basically but that's what the engines uh, are at you know they're really looking at uh, how can we uh, somehow um i guess you know get the major pieces involved in defending that um the king side and uh, the queen's going to have to do it you know through um uh by you know sort of trying to power itself through in the king side and the rooks are going to have to do it by giving back the extra material you know um but that's where the engines are at in this position what black did was um i'd say excessively calm he played the move a6 i think he was getting worried about this a6 idea as well um, played the move a6 and now the engines are just finished game finished now completely winning for white you know it just turns around like that and i think that's also the um you know the the, the thing about how leela is playing i mean leela is heading for these super sharp positions where you know at the crucial moment a mistake and it's not just like oh now you're only uh slightly better it's like you've totally lost now you know and uh and that's why human players are finding it so difficult because human players we're not good especially with uh, shorter time controls, you know, even 10 plus uh, 5 or 15 plus 10. Uh, we're not very good at dealing with those sudden turnarounds. Um, you know, it takes us a while to refocus and recalibrate and understand, oh, OK, the, the whole situation has changed. And um, that's what Leela is, is exploiting there. So F takes G5, HG5, Queen H5. Hitting F7, hitting G5. So c3 from black, black, you know, desperately trying to um, to get the queen involved and also um, kind of trying to stop the um, the white rook from heading over here, basically. And uh, so c3 is, um, yeah, a reasonable uh, attempt for a counterplay there. But now uh, what um, what Leela does is really clever. And I, I just hadn't seen it coming, actually. You know, I was looking at taking the g pawn or taking the f pawn, trying to power through there somehow. But um, but the engine just play rook c1, b4 takes so yeah i mean you know black's got this problem because if you start playing moves like queen there trying to get out of the way then you know why could even take the, the the bishop on b7 and and start being just material up you know i mean uh so takes takes rook f3 hitting the pawn on c3 rook b8 from black you know black's thinking well i, I don't want to you know i, I don't want to lo just lose a piece and then i'm just going to be you know equal material or or or, or 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 a pawn down or something i mean i'm just going to be completely lost there but Leela played the move bishop f2 instead of uh, taking this pawn or taking that pawn. And I was thinking, what on earth is that about? I mean, is this, you know, just um, reinforcing, being excessively calm, you know, reinforcing the pawn on d4? Well, what's this all about? You know, black played c2. And now you see it. Um, rook h3 for white. And you're just delivering mate on, on f7. You're not hitting, taking the g, g pawn. You're not trying to power through on the f7 pawn that you're attacking with your knight and queen. You're just going to give mate on um, on h7. 
really cool. And uh, of course, you know, the idea is that if you go uh, rook c8, then queen f7 check is uh, is checkmate. That's the idea. So there's no way, there's just no way you can stop mate here. So um, uh, black resigned here because it's just turned around, you know, in three or four moves. It's gone from, uh, from uh, you know, black still better according to the engines. But yeah, as human players, we're seeing the risk increase to just totally lost mate in, uh, mate in, uh, in three or four. So um, I thought that was an amazing game again, you know, just simply, um, uh, you know, and just from um, a semi Slav looking structure. Right. I mean, uh, this is, a, you know, uh, we see this sort of structure in daily in daily games. Leela, night odds, giving away a pawn uh, on top of it and then just playing this semi Slav structure with a knight less as if it was totally normal and winning within 24 moves, you know, really really impressive uh, this one and um and some great play and um you know what you're what you're seeing of course is how difficult it is for human players to to deal with the pressure once things turn around and um yeah of course you know these these great tactics this move bishop f2 and uh, you know and of course seeing it way in advance right but uh you know um you're just getting hit with attacks we say oh my goodness he's, he's he's hitting me there i was looking at the g pawn the f pawn he's getting me on the h file somehow you know it's uh, really quite incredible and of course you see yeah that um the attacks happened all over the board right because we've got a knight in the center there we've got the the c file we've got a knight attacking the pawn on b7 and then we've got the attack both on f7 and then against the h file you know it's just complete vision of the board somehow and so hard for human players to deal with i mean you know even uh, at long time controls but um, obviously at faster time controls uh, even more so um uh yeah wonderful game i've got lots more coming i've got some uh, um a few more night odds games i've got uh, some rook odds games coming where to be honest i'm yeah i don't know i don't know in leela's hands the rook odds doesn't doesn't look any more than the night odds to be honest uh yeah i'm i'm pretty I'm not sure whether whether I'd, I'd particularly expect to make a better score against night odds than uh, than rook odds, and also some games with black, which is really interesting to see how uh, how Leela's uh, playing. So um, I'm just going to keep on working at this because um, uh, I mean there are just so many games and it's so good. And to be honest, it's one of the most amazing things for chess that I've seen all year. You know, so uh, I do hope you're enjoying this, and you know I do have a go playing against Leela. I'll probably uh, heading for some holidays uh, in a few weeks' time, so. Uh, I'll try and just uh, recover a little bit, and then uh, I'll probably give a give a go to uh, to uh, to Leela as well. Going to in, uh, enjoy that, though. Um, I, I'm honestly expecting, you know, not to make any better score than anyone else. Uh, you know, I'm seeing people rated uh, my rating in Leeches, and um, you know, they're scoring something like 131 against three or something like that. You know, with Leela with 131, so. Uh, um, you know, I'm not expecting to uh, to make a much better score, but um, yeah, really brilliant work from the uh, from the Leela team and a wonderful way of um, of um, of working. And I'm, what I'm also working on as well is I'm trying to to draw the lessons from the play, basically, and uh, try and understand what does Leela's play in odds chess teach us about dynamism, compensation and all of that. And I think there's a lot to be said there, uh, really. What I'm really looking forward to, so I'm just talking too much, you know, feel free to move on to another video. What I'm really looking forward to is um, getting the Leela net incorporated in the um, in the main Leela net so that we can have it all on our PC. And then I want to try some some Morphe games, you know, some of the great odds players and uh, try Leela in those and see how Leela's playing those positions. Because I'm intrigued uh, to see what uh, how Leela sees, uh, you know, the way that Morphe played and uh, and um, and how Leela would do it. And that seems really interesting as well great book by the way by uh, uh, Charles uh, Hertan on uh, Morphe which covers a lot of his odds play as well and uh, yeah I thought it was a fantastic book gave it a great review in New in Chess so do take a look at that if you're interested in odds play and interested in what Leela's doing to do take a look at that book because Hertan does some really nice analysis on the odds play so there we are. Thanks very much for watching. Sorry for the uh, for all the talking. Just got really excited about it. And uh, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you at the next videos. Thanks for watching.